Hello, my name is Leah Cuello and I graduated in May 2010 uh, with a degree in radio, television, film, and English. I was a co-producer of Sneak Peek. Ayla Snyder was my partner in crime and I only did it for one semester and then I went to UT in LA. I first heard about TSTV the summer before my sophomore year from my good friend Drew Saplin. I was a biology pre-med major at the time and he told me that he could convince me that I was gonna be an RTF major if I came to volunteer for him at his new show he was producing called Sneak Peek. So he invited me to come, I went to the fall meeting, got to see all the presentations, um, and I was completely blown away. I was like, oh my god, this is my home away from home, I have to be here. At the fall orientation meeting, of course, sneak peek, I had friends that were working in that, so that was my first show I worked for. But then I remember thinking to myself, okay, you love playing video games, but you're really terrible at them, but all these people seem really cool. So I volunteered, I think there were only two girls at the time, um, and then none of them really, they didn't, a lot of the girls didn't host at all. A lot of us were just in the background like answering telephones, but it was still fun. I would play occasionally, I got really nervous though because they were all so good and I was so bad. This is gonna be on TV for everyone to see. Um, so I started off just kind of being in the background, just laughing, and but in that, but doing that, I got to observe everything that was going on because their process of the show, half of it's live, half of it's taped. So I got to see both sides of it because Sneak Peek was all live. So doing the tape segments for VGHL was really, really cool. I got to do some industry news. I got to learn a, a lot about how they would capture the game footage to then show when they're like testing out a new game. I learned so much about video games. I would come home and impress my younger brother, which is weird, but I'd just be like, yeah. So have you played this new game? And he'd be like, yeah, Lee, that came out like five years ago. But I thought I was so cool. For sneak peek, I started off just thinking I was just gonna just be a volunteer, just learn, because at that point I hadn't taken any RTF classes. I didn't really know how to do anything. I knew how to edit on iMovie, and that's about it. But I, so I really wanted to try and do anything I could, and luckily they said, sure, here's the lights, here's the teleprompter. Um, and then eventually I decided that I wanted to audition to host, and I did, and that's where I met one of my dear friends, Haley Denny, and we became co-hosts together. But in addition to that, we also wrote our own material for it, um, filmed and edited our own segments, that was the great thing about it, is that you could learn how to do so many things. You didn't have to just be in one area, which I think helped me out definitely in the future. We got to go to South by Southwest, um, Fantastic Fest, Awesome Film Festival for free, which is very awesome, but also um, a lot of screenings, press screenings going on where we'd see movies weeks in advance. Um, that was definitely very fun. Um, we got invited to a few like press tours for the Jonas Brothers movie was one highlight. Um, got to meet them. Um, but I think just going to the festivals, just being part of that environment, not only just interviewing the directors, writers, and actors, but just meeting a whole community of people that love the same stuff that you do. It was very, it made, it made me love Austin a lot. What you don't see happening on camera, what's going on in front of us sometimes is the most ridiculous. We're trying to concentrate and read off the teleprompter. And there are people dancing in the backgrounds behind the cameras, making faces of a, at us, making obscene gestures, the most loving way, of course, and um, <laughs> just being utterly ridiculous. And you just have to make a straight face. That became the game. Like, how much can someone you know, try and throw off your concentration to the point of where they're like almost licking your feet. That did happen. Someone tried to lick someone's feet to make them to laugh. It wasn't me. I wasn't, it's, you know, but yeah, it's just goofballs. Shenanigans. Shenanigans and tomfoolery at Sneak Peek. Going to South by Southwest for the first time ever with Kurt. He was uh, my co-host and we had so much fun. I'd never been to any festival before then, so to go to that festival and interview people like Duncan Jones, um, who directed Moon, was amazing. 
It was way, way too much fun. And then I think our, my last semester doing TSTV, Haley, Denny, and I made one of our biggest dreams come true. We went to Fantastic Fest and met George Romero and we're huge zombie fans, so we both are just like shaking. And she's holding the microphone, just shaking, interviewing him. I'm holding the camera, it's just shaking, and we're just hoping that this comes out okay. But he was the most adorable old man. We asked him questions about the zombie apocalypse, and he was just as cool as can be. I think I was way ahead of people that were in RTF before me because as many people know, a lot of your intro courses, you don't even get to touch a camera. And I was touching one, and I wasn't even an RTF major at that time. Um, so I went into my classes um, already knowing that stuff. I had friends who were already a little more advanced in RTF, so they helped me out when I was first starting. Super fun. I, at that point, I had kind of been at TSTV a little longer, so I was a little more confident, and I kind of figured out that you can be just super ridiculous at TSTV and it makes for great television. So hosting with Wesley was great. I think I killed him like five times, so many times, I can't even remember. I think Steven was coming up with all sorts of different ways for me to kill Wesley, just telling me so many, he's like, what if you just punch him like this and then karate chop him and do this? And I just did it because I knew there'd be some sort of special effect added to make me look way stronger and way cooler and badass than I really am. For sneak peek, there was one episode that I, that I hosted with Ayla Snyder. And because of that, Ayla and I have an intense love for High School Musical, all things Disney. And in that episode, we just were so ridiculous. Kevin Porter wrote a, song, a love song to Zac Efron. It was just like a musical episode. It was just the most ridiculous episode ever. But everyone had such a blast. I think that was the first time we're all like, you know what, let's just do whatever. Whatever happens on air happens on air and it'll be great. Video Game Hour Live, I have to say the Star Wars episode was so much fun. I had just come back from my semester in LA, so it was kind of a reunion of sorts to be back in the studio, and I love Star Wars. Um, and there was just so much hard work put into it from the script, from the special effects to everything. I mean, everyone was involved. I can't think of a person that volunteers at the station that wasn't involved in some way, even if they'd never done anything for Video Game Hour Live before, they had some small little part in it. Um, and it was super fun. I think it was the last thing I actually shot at TSTV, so it's it's very fun. We even did like a DVD or something commentary on it later on in LA, so it carried on to even further. Yeah, I definitely think that TSU is one of the reasons I stayed at UT. Um, when I went there, I didn't really know anyone. Um, it was completely different from where I went to high school, so it was kind of my, became my home away from home. Um, and then once I got into RTF even, it became even a tighter knit community because not only would we help each other with our projects going on at TSTV, but for our RTF classes, we all helped each other out. You know, we all pulled all nighters up in the war room editing our, you know, all of our movies and projects, just helping each other out. It doesn't matter. We would see the sun set and rise together. Um, but yeah, we're all very um, tight knit. I think everyone that I made friends with at TSTV, I'm still friends with today. I could literally take out my phone and text them, call them right now and be like, I need your help. And they would help out in some way. I live in LA now but I come back to Austin whenever I can, so the distance doesn't matter. I can call it, it feels like I never left the war room. As cheesy as that sounds, it's true. Um, a lot of us are out in LA right now, kind of, you know, bonding together, and if anyone needs help with projects or finding work, we all help each other out as much as we can. We hang out on the weekends. We try and see each other as much as possible. Um, but yeah, definitely the closest friends I have to date are the ones I met at TSTV, for sure. And they're also the people that I think, probably for the rest of my life professionally, I will, you know, lean on because I think we all are going to do exciting things.
Well, Night Night Show started off as kind of a talk show format with Billy Maddox, um, William Maddox, uh, or Will. I never, people, everyone calls them different things. But um, yeah, it was a talk show format with, uh, he had a co-host, Lauren Grush, comprised of interviews and short little sketches, it eventually evolved into a narrative show that actually, you know, writers meetings, it was, it was most, a lot of it improvised. But when I was kind of dabbled in Night Night Show was when it was the talk show format, um, late night talk show, and there was one infamous sketch called Bro Our Live with Anthony Noto and Kurt Falkenhagen, and I had no idea what I was getting into at all. They just said, hey, can you be on our show called Bro Hour Live? Like, you just have to walk on and just, just you know, answer a few questions. We're gonna act all fratty, whatever. And I was like, okay, I, I can do this. I've been around TSTV and these guys are my friends long enough that I trust them. I trust their judgment. Um, never again, no. Um, and it just, it just evolved into something that I had no idea. I mean, it was hilarious. I honestly don't know how we got away with it. I don't know how we were allowed back in that building. Cause it, not, it wasn't terribly horrible. It was just, we all were just like, what are we doing? Um, but it was great. It was really funny. Um, you know, the question, will it fit, became a common phrase around the station and I love it. I love it. It's so funny and maybe you'll find it on YouTube. I don't know. It's it could be blacklisted. It could be too racy for you kids. It was the most bizarre building. Like I feel like they used to host have like events there or something because it was just like large like ballrooms with like really awkward looking like chandeliers but then behind the scenes there was like this creepy kitchen that had like tar on the ground and broken tiles and like exposed pipes I mean, it was perfect for filming a student project and everything it was awesome um, but really odd it was when i was producing sneak peek which is really strange you know we were trying to get people excited but we were filming in this tiny little thing that was just like cloaked by like um, velvet black curtains and it was just like really hard to like try and get people motivated when kind of our surroundings were kind of very bare, very bare minimum, but we made it work and I think it kind of tested us like okay we don't, we're not, we don't have our big studio to film everything, we just have this minimum space, let's make it work and I think the content we produced and the stuff we got done just a testament to the hard work and how much everyone really loved the station because we knew that we weren't going to be in Walter Webb forever. So we figured, you know what, let's just make the best of this while we're here so that when we move to the studio, we can we already have a quality of work that we can continue. And it was fun, I mean, looking back it's just bizarre that we were there and we made it work, but it also kind of made it worth it to then go back to the studio and see like how good we do have it now. Like everyone is so lucky. But yeah, it's great. I think probably the most valuable thing I've learned, and it's pretty basic, but just just be a nice person. Like, it sounds really cheesy, but honestly, you'd be surprised how far reputation goes in your professional life. If you're nice to other people, they're gonna refer you to other people just on the basis, like, they're just pleasant to work with. Like, you could have, you could be super good, you could be the best editor, you could be the best writer, but if you're a jerk and no one wants to work with you, no one's gonna hire you. But I think you learn that at TSTV. It's like, you don't have to be the best, you know, DP, you don't have to be the best at lighting. As long as you're like really nice, you're able to put in the hard work, and you're just like an all around good person to work with, I think that goes a long way. Um, and I think because of that, I forged a lot of relationships at TSTV that I am positive are gonna help me in the future. I mean, in LA, we've all referred people to jobs. I wouldn't have the job that I'm at now if I didn't have a friend that I met at TSTV that told me about this opportunity. You know, we all refer each other, we all help each other out, but just be a nice person. I mean, <laughs> when you're at TSTV, if you act like a jerk, no one's gonna wanna volunteer and work with you. No one's gonna wanna work on your show. So don't go somewhere and feel entitled to have a job because you have to work for it and 
Everyone starts off as a volunteer. You start off as an intern and working for nothing. And just, if you make a good impression on people, eventually they're gonna pay you for doing what you love. What I would tell someone who wants to join TSTV is definitely do because it's something that you can really be involved in creatively. A lot of times in your RTF classes, there are restrictions on what your projects have to be, you know, like, this is the subject matter, you have to do this length, this length, da 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 At TSTV, like, there's so many different types of shows, like, if you're into sports, if you're into movies, if you're into video games, you go to those, and everyone usually is so open about doing new ideas that you can be like, I like this video game, I like this movie, can I, you know, do a piece on this? And they let you do it. They give you a camera, they give you lights, and you have so much creative freedom. You can even edit it yourself. And that's so rare, and I feel like the projects that I came out with that I did at TSTV, I'm more proud of than some of my class projects. Like sure, they're my ones in class, you know, have I shot in film and I like audition actors and they're and I like them okay, like they're good. The ones I did for TSTV, like it's full of my friends and it's full of stuff that I really care about and I was allowed to do whatever I wanted. If I wanted to do something about Disney or horror movies or anything, they just said, go go for it. Just do it. Like here's a camera, find your crew whoever you want and just get it in on time. And I think because of that, it was for someone that kind of had no sort of RTF television production background start going into it. I was like, I'm allowed to do this and it's, I'm not being graded. Like it's, it's very um, liberating. If you're in TSTV right now, stick with it as long as you can. Um, because I think that I've got so much out of it and I miss it every day. I miss having, getting to go to the war room and see all my friends and just chill and just vent if I need to, if I'm stressed out, like I definitely miss that. Um, stick with it because the friends you're making there hopefully are people that, you know, you're not just working with professionally, but people later on, if you like honestly need anything, they can be your family away from your family, your home away from home. Um, yeah, stick with it. If you're thinking of joining TSTV, do it. If only just to meet some really cool people, like the people there you won't meet anywhere else. Everyone comes from so many different backgrounds. Um, and yeah, just know that the people that have come before you at TSTV have really worked hard since then and we've all, you know, are making it out in the world so that we can all have more TSTV babies come join us because I feel like a mom sometimes because whenever a new TSTV kid comes out to LA, I get so excited. So stick with it because you have a family there that you don't even know of yet. And it's really cheesy. I can't believe I just said that.